Alright, so here's my example of the coil pot. Like I was saying a minute ago, you're going to learn two vital skills. One, how to roll out a coil, um, and you're going to do a lot of them in this project. And also you'll learn how to roll out a slab, which is the majority of what you'll do on the table the rest of the year. Um, coils are used all the time, one to build bigger things. This entire thing is built out of coils, which I'll show you in just a second. And then also the handle is made out of a coil. So the rolling pins and paint sticks that I talk about in the comps, they're both in here. Second one from the bottom, okay? Don't use the plastic ones. Some people pull out the plastic uh, pipes, if you will, and they use those and they just sticks to the clip like crazy. The other uh, tidbit that you don't necessarily need, but some people find them convenient, is a piece of canvas. This helps it so the clay doesn't stick to the table. Some of you will roll out a slab and it'll take you forever. Some of you it'll take you five minutes, no big deal. Um, and some, the more or the longer it stays on the table, the more moisture gets absorbed into it and it sticks really bad. So those, the canvas, are in here. Okay, little stacks. If they're soaking wet, just leave them on top here for a little bit so they can dry and they don't grow mold. And in the comps, it says to roll out a slab to a quarter, or I think it's a half inch. It's a half inch thick, excuse me. So each one of these paint sticks is a quarter inch. Please don't assume that the ruler is the same. The rulers look like, I got them from an elementary school. It looks like little kids have chewed on them. I don't know what happened to them exactly, but make sure your canvas is clean. So each paint stick is a quarter inch thick, so two of them would be a half inch. So I'm going to take a ball of clay. I'm going to do a little CPR action just to flatten it out a little. Okay, then I'm going to roll it out. And notice when I roll it, it only gets longer. It doesn't get any wider. So if I want it to be more circular, I need to turn it 90 degrees like so. Otherwise, it'll just keep stretching and keep stretching. It doesn't get any wider. But make sure you stay on the paint sticks. I get a lot of students that'll come over here and they start rolling and they wonder why one side's paper thin and the other side's the half inch that it's supposed to be. And again, you want leverage, so stand up for this. I see a lot of people sit and they go like this and it takes them forever. But you want some leverage. I have the advantage of being pretty tall and a little heavy. A little plus size model. All right. So you'll see now it's not really touching the clay anymore, it's because it's rolled out to a, a half inch thick. If I had done this on the table, it might stick, but it didn't take me that long, so it shouldn't stick. Most of you won't need to use the canvas, but if you take a while, you will need to. As far as cutting the base out, this is going to be the floor of my pot right here, the very bottom of the foot. Okay? You can cut any shape you want, but it needs to be at least four inches wide. So I'm going to use a circle, I just grabbed one of these cups from above the sink. Set it on there, and I'm going to trace around it. I get students who will make their own stencils. They'll take a piece of paper and fold it in half and cut out like little hearts. Uh, I get triangles, squares. That's all a part of creativity. So I'm going to save this extra scrap around the outside. Save the extra scrap. And you notice when I cut my circle out, I cut the circle. And I made one little slit in it so that I can take the piece off pretty clean. I'm going to save this for rolling out coils. So now I can get rid of my canvas and my paint sticks. I don't need those anymore. And the cup. So now I have my base. And I would measure that to make sure it's four inches wide, which I know it is because I've measured the cup beforehand. And get rid of the canvas. Set that aside. Clean up my edges before I move any further. Now for coils. This tends to be the part my uh, students take a little while to learn. I'm gonna sit down for this. The reason I sit down for this is not because I'm being lazy, but it just helps me stay level with the table. What I get is a lot of students. Who, when they roll their coils, they kind of do this little arching thing and it causes flat coils. So I'm going to roll it a little bit in my hands first just to get the shape going. And then I'm going to roll with my hand and I want to go the entire length of my hand. I get a lot of people that are trying to stay in their space, their little personal space, and they do this. 
it'll just end up flat. But you wanna roll it as long as you can. It'll help you roll the coil faster. So you'll see that mine's getting kind of flat. You don't want that. So the longer strides will help you avoid that. And the longer your coils, the less work you have to do over time. So you'll notice it was going flat for a second and now it's nice and round. Okay. You want it to be somewhat even so I can see this side skinnier than the rest of it. So I'm going to thin out the rest. There's my first coil. So I'm going to set this out. I'm going to score the edge right where I'm going to put my coil. The first one is the only one you need to score. After that, you just need to moisten each coil with a sponge. Then I'm going to score the bottom of my coil as well. I'm not going to use this entire coil. I mean, I will eventually, but not on this first row. Then a little slip. This slip is really dry. Again, your slip should be the consistency of a milkshake. Right now it's like dry cake batter or cement. This is going to be the supporting base of your entire thing, so you may get up to a certain height and you'll find out if you scored and slipped well enough. If it starts to cave in at the bottom, when you get like 10 rows high, then you know you didn't score and slip very well. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to press it all the way against the outside of the base. So my fingers just kind of match up with the wall on the floor and I push it in. And I squeeze all the way around, just lightly, just to kind of flatten it out a little, so it's not so round. And then I'm going to overlap. At the overlap, I'm going to cut with my needle tool. This part will help you match things up precisely. So then I'm going to pull that little chunk out from the bottom, and it's going to match exactly like so, and then I'll blend that. Okay, there's my first coil. Just make sure it matches to the wall, it doesn't hang over the wall too much. <coughs> okay, coil number two. And I'm not going to build this whole structure, I'm just going to kind of give you the ideas. So you can see how it helps having the first coil rolled all the way out, because now I've got almost the whole second coil already rolled. I'm just going to thin this side, because this one's already thin enough. So again, full length of your hands. Don't go short, don't do this. And don't arch it either. So I said it would be easier sitting down and finding that it's not easier sitting down. I'm just going to look at it, make sure it's fairly even. Okay, so the second one, I don't need to score and slip now. It's just kind of a waste of your time because you're going to be blending these. So I'm just going to get a little bit of water on a sponge. Moisten that. Take my coil. And I always like to put the seam, if you will, the beginning of the coil in a different spot every time. So my first one was right here where they match together. So I'm gonna put this in a different spot. And then I'm gonna pinch it. So sometimes my coil is gonna be thicker or more thin. I'd like it to be a little thicker than the first one. That way I can pinch it all the way around and get it to match the thickness. And also when I pinch it, it's gonna make my pot taller. So when I'm trying to reach those eight inches, I don't have to work so hard. I don't have to make so many coils. So you see, I just pinch it all the way around, just to the same thickness. I'm just matching it to the first one. And after they overlap, I'll cut it right there again. Take that little chunk out. And then blend it. So again, I'm going to even it out, just make sure it's even with all the, the first coil all the way around. Okay, I'll do one more coil. Like 
that's going to be long enough. So I'll add a little bit more. And you want it to go all the way around. If you're making coils that are this long, you could technically build it, but it's just going to be mismatched and it's going to cause you some, some problems later. This is a very uh, Native American style pottery um, technique. If you've ever seen the little black pots in South American, uh, not South American, Southern United States pottery. If you ever go to a Native American museum or natural history museum, they have a lot of coil pots. I see some of the ones in the museums and I'm like, man, I wonder how much they sold those for, but I've seen some of the stuff they make on tribal grounds and usually they sell it for like 10 bucks and they put in so much work. I just can't imagine doing that much work for 10 bucks. All right, so again, moisten the coils. If you ever go down to like Mexico or anything like that, you see some of the Aztec pottery that the little ladies do on the street. And it's 10 bucks, buy it from trust me. It's gonna be worth a lot of money one day. All right, so again, setting it on there after moistening it so that it sticks and you have to moisten. Don't just assume you can just stick it on there. Pinching all the way around. And you wanna make sure that you keep control of this the whole way around. You don't want it to start flaring out. If it starts going out into like a, a base style, make sure you tame it and get it back in. Maybe cut a section out, put it back together. If you get stuck somewhere along the line, just let me know and I'll help you. Some strategies on this one. So there's my third coil. I'm going to blend it right at the seam to make it a little stronger. Okay, after about three rows like this, you want to start blending. And the reason I say after three, three or four, depending on how big your hands are, is because you won't be able to reach later on. And you're going to have to blend both the inside and the outside. So I'm going to take my modeling tool. You can use whatever works best for you. If you use the smooth rib, maybe that works for you. It's okay, I, I, I like the way the smooth rib blends, but it tends to leave little ripples. So I use the modeling tool. It'll be a little bit more rough at first, but it blends all the way across the seams. Okay, so I'll do this both to the inside and the outside. <coughs> I'm not gonna make you watch me blend the entire thing. Just every once in a while, make sure you move it because you can see the spot I've been working in is getting moist and that tends to make it stick a little bit more to the table. So for some of you with little hands, um, you may want to do it after every two coils to start blending. It'll also make it stronger. Make it so you won't rip your coils off. You are going to need to be gentle with these, but um, also don't, I know every once in a while you'll have to miss these because we'll be working on these over the period of a couple weeks. Don't spray too much. Maybe missed it once a day after about the third day. And then let it dry out a bit. But if you're spraying it and soaking this thing, the water will find a way out. And it usually creates a little crack. So we're fairly well blended. Then I would go over it with the smooth rib and just kind of get rid of all those little lines. Clean it up a bit. Then I would do the inside. The inside I use the popsicle stick side and I just blend the bottom lightly. Start with that, then I'll blend my coils. Okay, so I started on the bottom like this and I just pinch it down. Can you guys see that? I just pinch it down lightly. Later I'll go over with my finger and just clean it up nicely. And then I'll blend the inside. And make sure sometimes you need to support the wall. Like I can feel it right now when I push against it to blend it it pushes out the wall. So I'm gonna support it from the backside so it doesn't rip all the stuff that I've already blended on the outside. <coughs> okay, then at the very end, you're gonna to need to either level out the lip, which I'll teach you how to do on the wheel after I finish building this, um, after a couple days of demo. And uh, you can either level it out or you can make it all creative if you wanna do something like that. Um, but it needs to be a minimum of eight inches tall. Okay, anybody have any questions? No, all right.